The eternal sin, also called the unforgivable, unpardonable, or ultimate evil, is the sin that God will not forgive. What constitutes eternal sin, and how will one know when he has committed this sin? I hope to discuss this with you in this video, and I'm sure you will gain more insight into this phenomenon by the time you finish. So, stick around. Many people have different ideas about unforgivable sin, but most agree that someone who believes they have committed it might fear that they cannot change their minds. Many people are aware of the various parts of the New Testament that talk about about the unforgivable sin. Matthew chapter 12 verses 30 to 32 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. So I tell you, everyone will be forgiven for their sins and profanity, but no one will be forgiven for blasphemy against the Spirit. From here, we can infer that it is okay to say bad things about the Son of Man, but not bad things about the Holy Spirit, not in this age or the next. This is because blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the one sin that can never be forgiven. It is also called the sin unto death, and is discussed in several places in the Synoptic Gospels and other parts of the New Testament, such as Hebrews and 1 John chapter 5 verse 16. Mark chapter 3 verses 28 to 30 says, Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. In John chapter 14 verse 17, Jesus Christ called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of truth. In Matthew 12 verse 31 he told us, All kinds of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven to men, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven to men. Because the Spirit is truth, as we see in 1 John 5 verse 6, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit means a clear and firm refusal to accept the truth. People who are aware of and stubbornly opposed to the truth are far from humble and sorry, and there can be no forgiveness without regret. Because of this, blasphemy against the Spirit can't be forgiven because a person who doesn't know he has done wrong doesn't want it ignored. Many philosophers have thought of other ways to understand the unpardonable sin besides saying that it is to blame Satan for the work of the Holy Spirit. Some people say Matthew chapter 12 verse 31 is one of the most complex parts of the Bible to understand and with good reason. There are however three likely conclusions that can be drawn about what this text means. First, if you insult any of the three divine persons, that could be considered a sin against the Holy Spirit. And second, that continuing in mortal sin until death with no intention of repenting thwarts the work of the Holy Spirit who is responsible for forgiving sins. And lastly, that sins against the quality of the third divine person person, which is charity and goodness, are done on purpose because they fight the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. This kind of sin might be worse than sins against the Father caused by weakness or ignorance or sins against the Son caused by ignorance. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, blasphemy against the Spirit is the sin of saying that Satan did what the Holy Spirit of God did. For example, the Pharisees said that Jesus could only drive out devils with the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons. Thus, the unforgivable sin or sin against the Holy Ghost is to sin against the Holy Ghost by confusing him with the spirit of evil. This means denying the divine nature of clearly sacred works out of pure hatred. So, sin against the Son of Man can be forgiven because it is done against the human body of Christ, which hides the divine with a humble and lowly appearance. This sin is also forgiven because it is done out of man's ignorance and misunderstanding. As Christians, the Bible tells us that there is no sin, no matter how vile that can't be forgiven by turning away from it and confessing it. No one can be sure that they will be spared, no matter how bad and guilty they are. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Some theologians say there are up to six likely sins against the Holy Spirit, and despair is one of those. This is when you believe that your evil is stronger than God's goodness, as the Master teaches. If someone wants forgiveness without confessing their sins, it is also considered a sin against the Holy Spirit. Going against the truth that you know, being jealous of a brother's spiritual progress, or his rise in God's favor in the world. Impenitence, which means choosing not to repent of sin, and obstructionism, which means that someone will not accept the truth that their sin has very little or no good effects on him and others, are all ways people can blaspheme against or grieve the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit can't be forgiven, which means it blocks the ways of obtaining salvation. However, it can't stop God from removing this barrier through a miracle. The pictures of hell that the Bible gives us need to be appropriately understood. Hell is the place where people go when they choose to be separated from God for good. To die in mortal sin without turning away from our sins and accepting God's kindness 
means that we decide to be separated from him forever. This state of permanently being cut off from God and the blessed is called hell. Due to this, eternal damnation is not God's doing since, in his loving kindness, he can only want the safety of the people he made. When the creature shuts himself off from the Creator's love, damnation sets in, a permanent separation from God, chosen by man's own free will and are proven in death which makes their choice permanent. You can also think of the unforgivable sin as dying without repentance from one's sins. When those who have not yet come to know the truth do not give up all known and unknown sins and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. As stated, the worst sin is blasphemy against the Spirit. And blasphemy isn't just saying bad things about the Holy Spirit. It is refusing to accept the salvation that God offers through the Holy Spirit and the power of the cross. If Jesus says that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit can't be forgiven in this life or the next, it's because non-forgiveness is linked to non-return. In this guise, many people have refused to go to the gates of redemption, which are always open in the economy of grace and where the Holy Spirit's work is done. The scripture in Matthew chapter 12 verse 31 has shown us that the scribe's unforgivable sin was attributing miracles done by the Holy Spirit to Satan and never changing their minds. Put another way, the only sin that can't be forgiven is refusing to see God present through Christ. If anyone sees their brother or sister in a sin that doesn't lead to death, they should ask God to forgive them and give them life. This is what is meant by 1 John 5 verses 14 to 17 when it says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. Knowing the true, rejecting the false. While this text emphasizes that prayer is important, as Jesus admonished us to pray repeatedly and with humility, it gives us another thought-provoking message. This is part of a message that is critical of Gnostic teaching, which doesn't believe in the Incarnation and doesn't believe in morality. It's likely that the sin that leads to death, said here, refers to the Gnostics' stubborn refusal to accept the truth and their blatant lack of morals. This kind of sin that doesn't change leads to spiritual death. Humans are not God, so we don't know when someone has reached this point. However, we should keep preaching the faith and asking people to turn away from their sins, since we think everyone has the chance to be forgiven. The Bible never mentions anyone who wanted to repent, but was never allowed to. People who want to come to repentance have faith that they haven't done anything wrong that can't be forgiven because Jesus paid it all. The Lord Jesus Christ has told us he wants the gates of forgiveness always open to anyone who turns away from sin. Let us pray. Please forgive us, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, for we are sinners. Amen. If this video has blessed you, kindly give it a like and share your testimony with me in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and God bless.